Thank you for showing up to today's scrap meeting. Our first uh, item on the agenda is the media tie-ins subject headings. So I'm going to summarize the discussion that scrap has had so far. Um, at the October 26th meeting, John Galdun proposed local subject headings for media tie-ins. The scrap members decided to continue the discussion via the listserv and then to bring the topic to pass. So during this discussion and the listserv, the scrap members were concerned that the headings for the titles were unnecessary and they decided that they would like to continue to the discussion at the scrap meeting before bringing the topic to pass. Um, an issue that needs to be discussed um, is if these headings will address a problem that people are currently having with finding the materials. Um, and if scrap should make a recommendation on the headings now, or if it should be brought to pass before making a recommendation at the next meeting. So are there any thoughts on these headings? Um, any concerns that you have so at my library um none of the people who work on the public desk have had any sort of issue with finding these materials i don't know if it's just because our patrons aren't asking for them or or what but um so to my mind if I know our library is not the only one. So if other libraries are having this issue, then I think it's fine to move forward with it. But I would definitely want to uh, bring it to pass first to see if this is just sort of a one-off issue or if it is something that's a little more widespread throughout the consortium. Is it something that we could handle the way that I'm blanking on which library it is that has um, their own local like own voices and I know Evanston has their own um, local subject headings for whatever their their archive or local history is or whatever. Um, is that something we could do for media tie-ins? Yeah, that's definitely an option for a library uh -huh. that's interested in it. Yeah, if you want a local, oh yeah, I guess I'm on. If you want a local heading, you just have to, you know, talk to me. I mean, you know, go over the headings with me or something, and follow the directions and um, the um, the wiki about how to establish a local heading. But usually, it would be a six ninety one, like if it's Wheeling or Indian Trails, and then your heading, so people know it's your heading. Because that's what Palatine does, and they're the own voices. Is there any other thoughts on the topic? I was just going to mention, I was going to mention that most, most easy readers are based on a television show or movie of some sort, Disney or cartoons, some, most some uh, Netflix cartoons. So it helps to have some sort of tie in heading to group them all for kids you know watching and tell their parents they're watching a cartoon they want a book on it they'll be able to find it if the parents don't know the name of the show or something like that it's a good example uh, so um 
group members, are you interested in continuing to pursue this by bringing the topic to pass for more information? Um, or would you um, prefer that we allow this to just be as a, a local heading if they choose to pursue the local heading? Well, I think if PASS determines that there's enough libraries that are interested in it to make it global, then we should consider that. So maybe take it to PASS just to find out how many libraries actually are interested in it. I agree yeah, with I can... Tammy. Oh, sorry, I was just saying I agree with Tammy. And then if it's not too many, then we can go the local option. Okay, great. Well, um, I will uh, bring this to pass at the uh, next meeting then. Um, the next thing on the agenda is the CMC cataloging documentation. Um, so Pam from the CMC provided the draft of the cataloging document for CCS. Um, I sent that document to the listserv for review and comments, and then I made a few changes. So the document is linked to uh, in the agenda, um, and I just wanted to bring it up to make sure there weren't any other questions, um, concerns, or recommendations for changes to the document. So if there are none, CCS can approve the document as is. It's a Fairly basic document. It looks good to me. I'm fine with it too. Okay, great. Um, our next topic on the agenda is if the 508 and 511 should be indexed. Um, so re-indexing can occur when a new library joins CCS. So Warren Newport's catalog is going to be merged with CCS um, by the end of the year. Uh, Jamie recently brought to our attention that 508 and 511 are not currently indexed in the pack. Um, and Jamie, if you would like to provide an overview of your findings before me, you are welcome to do so. Um, and then I can also summarize my own findings on the topic. I don't know if I have any findings, but it just seemed like it was similar to like the 245C or something that might have a bunch of names in there that might or might not have 700s. So might as well just index them the same as you would other author fields. Okay. Um, so I've done some research into other libraries to see um, if they also index it. Um, and I found online that it's kind of split 50-50 uh, between the libraries that I researched. Library of Congress indexes it, but Yale University does not, and that was documented online. Um, Swan indexes it, but Pinnacle does not. Um, so um, since the 700s are indexed, the only issue would be if the names in the 508 and 511 um, were not indexed. Um, and that is um, really kind of hard to study right now. Um, I had Bob do some research into the possibility of trying to compare the 508 and 511 to the 700 fields. Um, and I, he found that um, we'd actually have to pay money for a special parser to um, do that study. So right now we're not going to pursue it since it, it's an additional cost. Um, and I spoke with Jebra about it. She provided me with information on what we would need to gather in order to gain approval. Um, so if Scrap is interested in pursuing this topic further, we would need to provide compelling evidence um, that indexing the fields um, is going to improve the patron experience. Um, and so to do so, we need to create a test record set, have that record set indexed, 
and then compare the searches in the client pack um, and leap um, in the training server to the production server uh, to see if the searching experience has been improved has been improved um, and then I would need to draft a recommendation to present to scrap at the next meeting and we need to vote on it. Um, so another thing to keep in mind is that if CCS um, switches to Vega, we found that indexing additional fields actually diminishes this quality of the search results in Vega um, instead of improving it. So it is going to be a problem um, if we do that. Um, so are there any thoughts on this topic? You mean it slows down the Vega search or it, it makes it less accurate? It doesn't slow it down. It just makes it less accurate. So if somebody is searching for a like an actor in the 511 that does not have a 700, it seems like it would improve the accuracy if that record would otherwise not be found. I mean, if it's not indexed at all, wouldn't that record not be found? I uh, you would you think so. Yeah. Record? I can also but I think I'm sorry. Oh, Michelle, you can go. No, I was gonna say in addition to what Jamie's point, I was also thinking of examples of um foreign films where a number of times with foreign films, the authorized heading doesn't quite match how it is in the 511 or 508. So that might be helpful too if someone's searching mm -hmm. with a different spelling or form of name. But I don't know if, again, I don't know if that would, but yeah, that's interesting to me that you say in Vega that the search is, that is not as good. But yeah, that's another thing I was thinking. It was just different spellings and different authorized forms. Right. Um, I haven't actually seen the difference in the results myself. The information came from Deborah. Um, so um, I'm not sure how much this would impact it if it was just the 511 and 508 that were being indexed. Um, but I think it would be a fairly simple task to be able to just pull together the record set and test it. Um, so if you are interested, I can pursue that and work on that with Bob. I think it would be interesting. Yeah, if a test is very feasible, then then I I would think we could do that and just see what the results are. All right, I will go ahead on um, that and just work with Bob and Lauren to um, get the test set up. And then I'll let you know and we can all try playing around with uh, searching. Um, to see how this improves the results. Our next topic is indicators for the genre um, headings. Oh, sorry. Ben. Um, ben has a question. Um, what search type is the index for? Is this for indexing the 508? 511 as an author search. Um, I think it would have to be a keyword search because author would have to be the authorized heading. Are there any other questions? Is there documentation for the fields that are already indexed in keyword? Um, there is, I'll have to uh, look for that link um, and I can send it to you. Yes,
I'd be interested in seeing that just because it, it would feel odd to me to add 508 and 511 to a keyword search if there's not a lot of other additional fields that have already been indexed as well. Like if this is an outlier or if past practices to just index whatever you want to index in keyword or has, has the keyword search been retained fairly restrictive um, in the past would Sarah posted the link. Thank, Thank you. you, Sarah. Could that be the reason that the search is less accurate than we would want it to be because if it's a keyword search and you're looking for you know joe smith it could bring up records that have actors with joe for a first name and smith for a last name but they're not joe smith they're two different actors yes that, that is one of the problems so for the 500 fields we have the 500 505 520 521 546 and 570 that are indexed Are there any other questions or comments on the topic? Um, I would find it hard to believe that adding 508 and 511 would be damaging to the keyword search, given how much is already mm -hmm. indexed in keyword in that document. Um, the amount of hits that you're going to increase by adding those two fields I would just have a hard time believing that it would be that significant um, to cause negative harm. Thanks for your comments, Ben. Ben, you have um, just joined us and we haven't introduced you. So please do introduce yourself to the group. Yes, I'm the Access Services Manager at Evanston Public Library, replaced Tim Longo. Thanks for joining us today. Um, are there any comments, um, any other additional comments on the topic? All right, let's move on to indicators for genre headings and authority records, Virginia. Um, can I, can I have your, can you give me the request so I can show something on my screen or it's whatever it is? <laughs> okay, you should be able to share now. That. Oh, where's my, okay. God, I didn't, pardon me, folks. I'm not real. Oh, here's share screen on me. Pardon me. Okay. Um, well, uh, I just wanted to bring up a, a topic. Um, this is a list of all the local, all the list of the genre headings that are derived from the LCSH form. This is actually something that I just copied real quickly yesterday um, from from your, from the wiki. Um, there's a, probably about twenty. No, there's less than twenty. There's um, of, of terms. Um, Jamie brought up, asked me a question at the, at the last CAM meeting about during the why that do these have to be zero, second indicator zero where everybody else is a seven. As you can see, the two examples down there, like young adult fiction, 655 zero, and almost every other um, um, genre heading, you're going to use the second indicator seven. And to make easier for the catalogers and everything else like that, when I was wondering if if we can change, if I can change all these indicators from zero to seven, um, the ones that are zero will become sevens. It's not a very hard process. It's just I have to go into I'll go into each of the authority record and change, um, edit the 
edit a field at 0008, if you must you need to know, I can tell you which um, little, little thing I changed. And the computer actually will do most of the change itself. Um, I will have to do some cleanup and stuff like that. And I'm actually doing some kind of a cleanup project right now with indicators um, from genre headings. And the problem I wanted, why I wanted to bring up with Scrap is that it, it's a cataloging change. It's a, it's a fairly major one to me. I think it actually would make it easier for the catalogers in the long run because um, they won't have to remember, oh, this guy is a zero. And you know everybody else is a seven, so everybody will just remember. Just remember to use sevens. So that's what I wanted to bring up and see if everybody else questions if they think it's a good idea. If I have to bring up to we have to bring this up to um, which we call it to the CAM meeting either. Also, would be something a great idea. Be, oh, I have a question though. Would we need? I think I would find it confusing only because. Would you also be adding subfield twos? Because if I mean, I don't know, I'm cute if I see a second indicator seven to look for that subfield two. So would they all just say local then, or would they just be second indicator seven with nothing else? I I wouldn't be doing anything with adding anything, um, any um, which one call it subfield twos or anything. I would just be doing letting the computer go. The computer will do the flipping. Okay, because I think later on. I think personally, I'd find it, I would find it a little confusing then, but that's just me. I mean, that's fine. That's why I wanted to bring up to see what, yeah. if, what everybody else's thoughts were. I think um, this had been brought up previously um, and was very confusing, um, even though we've discussed it at CAM and everyone felt that it should still be zero. Okay. Um, but if it was changed to seven, I think we'd still have to put in a subfield to um, for LCSH and not, yeah. I mean, I guess you could make it local, but we'd have to decide on whether it's local or LCSH. And this, either way, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just fine bringing it up to you guys. I don't care. I mean, it's, it's an easy, quick fix, not quick, but it can be done. But a lot of these headings, their zeros are becoming I mean, zeros are becoming LCGS, FAT, LCGS, or whatever. Um, anyway, are being changed over. Um, some like Magna, Magna uh, Manga, and um, actually large print, large type is now large print, and I'll be doing those changes soon in the catalog. Yeah, I mean, at first, glance, as I said, I thought it was a great idea, but if we did have to include a uh, subfield two, I think that's more labor intensive on catalogers than remembering that this handful uses subfield zero, then making it um, with a, or rather second indicator seven, but then having to use a subfield two. Don't we have another list of local headings that do use subfield to local? Yes. Yeah, it's on the wiki somewhere. So it's not really more work than we're already doing. It's just now we have two separate lists. And for one group of terms, you have to remember it's seven plus local. And for another group of terms, you have to remember it's second indicator zero. So I agree with Virginia that this is a very simple thing for her to implement. And we then just have one list of local headings. They would all be seven plus local or whatever we decided for the subfield two. But on the subfield two, it doesn't really matter in our system if you have a subfield two or what it is if you have one at all. I guess I also just think, because I know a few years ago when we were all inconsistent with, with I know it was, I think as Virginia was telling us about young adult fiction, how we were all inconsistent. Some of us had zero, some of us had seven local, some of us had seven LCSH. And so I guess I know I'm one person and it doesn't really, that's fine. It doesn't really matter if I'm outvoted. I guess I just think it would be confusing to go back and forth between different things as well. Like we were told we'll do one thing a few years ago and now we're doing this, which is it's a weird thing to say because we're things are always changing in cataloging anyway. As Virginia pointed out, things are being changed to LCGFT. And so this list will probably get smaller. But anyway, that's just that's what I gotta say. I just just feels a little like flip floppy. 
Because this has been a very confusing issue um, with inconsistencies in the past, I would say that to pursue this, um, SCRAP should vote on the recommendation. Um, and then if the recommendation to make the change passes, it should be brought to CAM. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that would be required in order to make the um, change acceptable and more consistent so that everyone um, sure. properly uses the correct term of uh, the correct indicators. I, I think this is a good idea. Can we just clarify where, what we'd be voting on? Like, are we voting for second indicator seven with a subfield two, everything local, or the subfield two doesn't matter? I just want to make sure I know what we're actually going to decide on. To be consistent, my recommendation would be to vote on a second indicator of seven and subfield to local. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like that would be helpful if if they were consistently um, indicator seven subfield two local because that was um, one thing that was a bit confusing to me um, when I started because I've only been here you know less than a year. That was one of the things that I found pretty confusing learning all the local practices. I would support this. So do we need somebody to put a motion forth for the vote? Yes, would someone like to make a motion to um, recommend that these um, genre headings should all have a second indicator of seven and a subfield to local? I will go ahead then and put the motion forth that we vote on having the indicator two and the, oh, you know what I mean, <laughs> the two <Okay>. local. <laughs> and does someone second the motion? I'll second it. Okay, Tammy is making the motion and Nora is seconding the motion. Um, and I will go through the um, roll and um, we'll do a roll call vote one moment. I can stop sharing the screen if it's easier for everybody. Or do you need it up? I'll just stop sharing. Um, okay. Um, I didn't notice Adrian come in. I didn't, so I think she is absent today. One moment. Linda. Looks like Linda has left. No, no. There you are. I'm here. Okay. Linda, um, how would you vote on this motion? I would be for it. Okay. Uh, Michelle? Uh, yes. Jamie? Yes. 
And Heather. Yes. Okay, um, the motion passed. Um, and we will bring this to um, Cam at the next Cam meeting. Okay, um, are there any other additional topics that you would like to discuss today? It seems like there are no other topics to discuss today, so we can go ahead and adjourn the meeting. And um, I will um, type up the minutes and send them out when they're ready. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.